here. Um, we're so excited to have the film play here. Um, and this is our final screening, so if um, but this film I made very differently than, than other films. Um, very difficult to film in a square where you could be arrested or shot at at any time, and so it's very, you sort of can't hire people to come do that with you. So the entire crew met in the square. Um, we were all there for different reasons, but basically because there was massive upheaval happening in our country, and because we all joined forces and decided to make something together. So much like the revolution, this was a bit of a leaderless uh, film, <laughs> and, um, but I, I'm proud to have sort of guided the way, um, and two years later we have, uh, we have this film, The Revolution is Still a Work in Progress, and we just finished shooting about ten days ago, and quickly um, you know, finished, put the last scene in, so the last scene of the film that you'll see was literally shot like right before we came to Sundance. So um, excuse some of the subtitle mistakes and there are no credits on the film because we haven't had time to put them on so don't wait for them because um, they won't be there. Um, and uh, we're really, really lucky to have some of our team members here, both the team who shot it and edited it and the people in the film have put everything that their lives on the line for what they believe in, have put everything on the line for the last two years for what they believe in. Um, and so I look forward to them joining me afterwards. They're here all the way from Egypt, and uh, we'll do a Q&A afterwards. And thank you so much for coming, and I'll see you after. You know, we, we stayed, but most of the people left because they're all like, this film is great, and everything, we love the film, and it's very important, but we're revolutionaries first, and it's the 25th of January, and it's two years since the beginning of the revolution, and we need to go back and be in Cairo in the streets. And I don't know if you've looked at the news today, but there's a lot going on. Um, yeah. Do you? Uh, do, do we have questions? So, how do you let this administration know that they're making a wrong decision with the Muslim Brotherhood? <laughs> <laughs> Question the question was, how do you let this administration know that they're making the wrong decision with Muslim Brotherhood? We take the film to Washington, maybe. Yeah, that, that's a start. I think uh, that the person who, uh, who who said it best is actually one of our characters, uh, Ahmed, uh, the the younger uh, the younger boy with the curly hair. He he was uh, being interviewed uh, in Egypt by a, a, a top uh, American journalist who was there uh, visiting, and he had, he had. You know, he had sat with all the leadership uh, on the secular side, on the Muslim Brotherhood side. The on journalist the side. had. This journalist had sat with all of them. And he was leaving, and, and Dina was actually working with him. And she's like, but there's one guy I really want you to meet. And he's not like a top leader of any political party, but you should really meet him. So he's like, oh, I'm really busy, but okay, fine, fine. I'll give him five minutes. Ended up sitting with him for two hours uh, on his way to the airport, before he was going to the airport. And, uh, they he, had was he was exhausted at the beginning at the of the beginning. meeting, and at the end he was sparkling. Yeah. Yeah. And so the, he, Ahmed had a question for, he had all these questions for Ahmed, and Ahmed's first question to him was, you know, I'm very confused about America. He's like, America supported Hosni Mubarak for 30 years. America supported the revolutionaries. America supported the army and continues to support the army. And America supports the Muslim Brotherhood. Who does America like and what does America want? And I think that's a big question a lot of people in the Middle East have. Um, you know, and I think that what we can do here as, uh, as audience members and as people living in America, I think that, you know, we can take advantage of the fact that we live in a representative democracy where you can, you know, write your congressman and, and do other activities like that to, to let, um, let people know and uh, help get the story out there, you know, to, to let people really see what the country that's receiving the second largest aid recipient in the world after Israel, where that money's being spent. Um, it's very, very moving to watch, and you guys captured beautifully a lot of the heroism. But it's also very painful, because it's a lesson we've seen throughout history, that if you don't break the hold of the repressive state, including the army, the streets will run with blood. And we've seen it in Indonesia, in Chile, all throughout the world. And I guess I want to ask the, the, that there's a, there's a reason that the U.S. supports the, the, the brutal regime there and has throughout the last 30 years having to do with the strategic interests of imperialism. 
And I did want to ask how you guys and the people you talked to wrangled with, and there's very little exposure about the U.S. hand in this, mm -hmm. and how you guys wrangled with the need to actually break the hold of the state, of, the, of a real revolution, which is also required in this country, not representative of democracy, but how you guys see that, how that got wrangled with. I'm a little confused about the question. The question is, is what, what's America's role in the... It's twofold. It's one, it's one the, the, the question of breaking the hold of the state, of, the, uh, of an actual real revolution that, that does that. And then two, in the particular case of Egypt, that state is entirely backed up by the U.S. So those things get inextricably linked, and how you guys see uh, that and how it got wrangled. I think all of us on the team, after two years of living in the what we've been, been living through and covering, I think we've all realized that revolution is not just about the fight against the state. Revolution is a state of mind. Revolution is a continuous activity and dedication, and dedication to those ideas and beliefs that you want to preserve or uphold in your society. Uh, and, and that's kind of what, we're, what, what the, we hope the film can be a testament to show, is that it's about the continuous struggle of a few to pursue and lead their nation, you know, and that's really what our characters do, and that's why they've inspired us, because they they don't compromise, they keep going, and they keep going, and they get, they're despite all the odds, they continue to fight for what they believe in. Um, so, you know, and I really believe that nothing's gonna stop them, whether it's the army, whether it's the Muslim Brotherhood, whether it's America, the, the, nobody can stop the power of young people who are determined to put everything on, their, on the line for what they believe in. I just had a quick technical question. It was just, the footage is just gorgeous. It's yeah. just, and it's sort of, uh, I don't know, like sort of awe-inspiring. I just thought the footage was gorgeous, and I was just curious if you could talk a little bit about how you captured it. What was the process of getting all that amazing stuff? Uh, well, um, first, we showed, we showed the whole film was filmed or DSLRs. And uh, we had a we had a very limited well, well we had a 5D and 6D and we had a very uh, at the beginning we were struggling and we had a limited budget so pretty much we used uh, 24 105 millimeters and 50 millimeter 1.8 so we used all the night shots which filmed with the 50 millimeter and uh, as you see the square is very orange. And uh, the, all the lamps there are orange, and we are very grateful for those lamps to be honest. <laughs> very, very grateful. Because honestly, without these lamps, we would have never been able to capture this, especially that the most brutal stuff and the most brutal action taken against the square was usually taken at night. And, and in side streets, that they would drag the revolutionaries and powers into streets so the media can cover. Because all the media is hiding on balconies and filming from balconies. But it was very, very, very rare to find a media camera in, on the ground deep inside. So we try to push us to places where the media can go all the way when we were filming this. Uh, Cressida and Ahmed, they're not here today, but uh, they're also very responsible uh, uh, for the results we've seen today. Um, we, used, we stressed on using the multiples of 160 MSO just to keep it more of an organic green. Uh, I think uh, that's about it. We had a brave, brave uh, person in Hamdi who actually taught the whole team how to use the camera. Yeah, we have the most talented DP in the Middle East. That's how it looks like it does. <laughs> wow, thank you so much. We were not expecting this at all, and um, we're really, really happy. Um, total honor to be here. This go There's so many people that are not here um, that have made this film happen. It was a true collaboration. Um, thank you, Brit Doc Bertha and Sundance and many, many people who have helped make this happen and my incredible, amazing team who I love so, so much who are standing on stage. Um, thank you. Thank you all for, uh, you know, the, this prize means the most to us because it's the, the audience and we're happy that our story that we just finished and uh, just thank you, we can't really say anything. And uh, we have t-shirts for people. <laughs> Square. Keep it going. The power of the camera. Thank you. Just, just one last thing for all our kids and all our guys back in the square keeping the stones raining. Thank you, keep it going. Thank you very much. People are back in the square right now fighting in Egypt as we speak. And so this, this film means so much, Tatsun.
And we want to thank all the people in our characters and all the people that have lost their lives. The many people that have lost their lives in the Hair Square for the, for the fight for Egypt's independence. Thank you very much.